goal of this part is to demonstrate how we can use STM32 CubeMX to prepare an application which is using FreeRTLS. We will reuse an empty project prepared for STM32L476 VGT6 uh, microcontroller. So as you can see we've got uh, an empty object, there is nothing assigned to the pins and uh, we can start new application. The first thing we need to do is to uh, select the debug interface pins. So I go to system core sys, I select within the debug tab serial wire, so I can see both debug pins present. And the second thing, very important uh, here, is to select the different time-based source. Time-based source uh, is in fact the timer, which is used by the HAL library uh, with the code generated by CubeMX. And what is important is that the same timer, Cystic, is used as well, is dedicated for FreeRTS as a time base for this system. It is not recommended to use Cystic for both purposes, so for HAL library and FreeRTS, so we need to select the different time base source for HAL library. What we can select, we can select any other timer which is available within the microcontroller. What I would recommend here is to use either timer 6 or timer 7, which are timers without any input nor output channels. Those are dedicated to synchronize other peripherals and to generate a simple time base. I would select timer 7 in this case. And if now, if I would go to the timers, I can see that timer 7 is not accessible anymore for me. And I've got the message that this timer is used for system time base. Okay, so this is the first, uh, the first point. The second point is to add FreeRTOS library. We can do it uh, as well for, within pinout and configuration tab going into the middleware section and now I can see free RTS and uh, when I click on it I can select the interface. There are two options here CMC's V1 and V2. Uh, what is uh, used uh, within HAL libraries and uh, STM32 CubeMX is in fact uh, the free RTS API with an additional layer, which is called CMC's OS layer. Uh, there are two files, CMC's OS.c and CMC's OS.h. We are describing this API uh, with a different section of this uh, training. So for our purposes, I would select CMC's v2. And now I can see the configuration for the free RTOS. There are a lot of tabs uh, within this. Uh, now we will focus on two most important ones, config parameters, which is the main configuration of the FreeRTOS, and include parameters, which is used to select the modules, the functions, which would be included into our code. Please remember that if you are not using uh, any of those functions, it is highly recommended to disable it. So to uh, not included into the code, do not extend, do not increase the code size of your application. Let's uh, come back uh, for a while into the config uh, parameters. As you can see, some of the options are not accessible for us. Those are the API version, uh, free RTOS version, CMC's RTOS uh, version. Uh, but most of the, of the fields are still uh, available for us. We will describe most of them, the most important ones within different section about the configuration of the free RTS. So let's not focus on it uh, here. So the second option, the include parameters, we already described. Um, we can enable or disable the function which could be included into our code. Uh, then we've got some user const constants which can be uh, used as well for us, and the rest of the tabs are related to particular parts of our, our RTOS uh, system. So starting from tasks and queues, uh, I can see uh, here two parts of this window. The first one is tasks, 
where I can add, delete, modify the tasks I would like to generate within my FreeRTS application. By default, there is only one task created, it's so-called default task, with the priority normal, uh, stack size uh, 128 bytes, and uh, the entry function, which is called start default task. Uh, I can change it uh, by double click on, on this, uh, this line, and now I can change the name, priority, stack size, entry function, and as well, code generation option, parameters and allocation can be either dynamic or static. So this is uh, how we can modify existing tasks. If you would like to add something, I just press add. I can see the new window uh, where I can put the information about my new uh, task. If I press OK, I can see the second, uh, second task uh, present. I can do uh, similar operations for the queues. So as you can see below, I have no queues uh, by default, so I can add one of those. Uh, here I need to put the name, queue size, so number of elements which uh, would be uh, inside the queue, and the size of uh, one particular element. Queue sh will contain, uh, the in this case queue will contain 16 elements, and each of these elements would be uh, the size of 16 bit without sign. If I press OK, I can see this new uh, queue as, as a defined. I can change uh, settings of this queue, its name, uh, size or item size by double click on its name, like with the tasks. Then the next step uh, is about the timers and semaphores. If I click uh, here, I can see the first uh, part is about the software timers. The second one is a binary semaphores and counting semaphores. So for the uh, for the timers, if I click OK, I can see as well the name of the of the timer, its callback, so the function which will be called when the timer will overflow, and uh, the type of the timer. The timer uh, can be periodic or one shot. Uh, we've got a dedicated uh, section within our training on software timers, so you can you can have a look on this. And again, if I press add, I've got some default settings um, and I can see my timer and if I would like to edit existing timer I just double click on its name. The same story is uh, with uh, binary semaphores, so if I click add I've got only two fields, the name of the semaphore and its allocation because binary semaphore it is uh, something either turn on or turn off. There are no parameters, there are no values, no variables inside, inside this. Uh, so it's very simple uh, component of the operating system. We can see the binary semaphore edit. The same uh, story is with the counting semaphores. The only difference is that with the counting semaphores, we've got an additional component uh, variable, which is count. Because counting semaphore, uh, can be given or and taken a few times uh, depending on the value we will set during its creation. So if I press add, let's change its name. Sema for C and T. And I will change this to into the into five. If I press OK, I can see its name, Sema for CNT, count 5, dynamic allocation. It means that we will have the semaphore uh, name, named uh, semaphore underscore CNT, which can be taken 5 times, and then it should be given maximum times 5 times. So this is, uh, this is uh, an extension of the binary semaphore. And again, we've got a dedicated uh, part within this session, which is about the semaphores binary and the counting. So you can refer to this uh, part for more information. The next tab uh, is about mutexes. If I click here, I can see two um, fields. I can see mutexes and recursive mutexes. Mutex is an extended version of the, of the semaphore. Uh, which is giving uh, more um, mechanisms uh, which are protecting the tasks uh, which are operating with the mutex. Uh, 
The creation of the mutex is very similar um, to, 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 to the semaphore, so I just click add, and you can, as you can see, we've got only the name of the mutex. I would just change this name into the mutex, mutex1, and that's it. So it's, it's very, very simple. Um, more information about the mutexes you will find in the related part of this training uh, later on. Additional tab uh, is about the uh, heap usage. So it's very, very useful one because it's demo it demonstrates to you how uh, much memory you have already consumed and uh, how much of it uh, you've got still uh, available for your, uh, for your operating system. As you can see at the beginning, uh, we've got heap still available in bytes. So uh, we've got uh, still 1,300 bytes available for our system from allocated uh, 3,000 bytes. Then what we used so far is 1,700 bytes. And as you can see, most of this uh, has been consumed by the tasks. Uh, then some part uh, for the queues, uh, a little bit for timers and uh, uh, 264 bytes for mutexes and semaphores. And then you've got uh, more details. Uh, you've got uh, how many bytes um, has been consumed by each task and then uh, each queue, each timer, each uh, mutex and uh, semaphores. So it's very useful. It demonstrates to you uh, whether you need to increase or decrease the size of the heap which you declared within the config parameters. So this is uh, uh, this is the area where you are declaring the size of the heap. So total heap size is a RAM memory declared to store the information, the variable information about the components of the operating system. It has been defined by default as 3000 bytes. We'll have uh, next section would be dedicated for the configuration of the operating system so you can learn a bit more about each of the parameters you can see right now on the screen. This is the configuration of the FreeRTOS. Important point is to properly configure the uh, interrupts within the system which is working with FreeRTOS. Let me go to the system view to NVIC to demonstrate you how it is uh, how it is done. Now what you can see uh, is the list of available interrupts uh, with the in, within the system. So mm, what you can see there are some system interrupts which are enabled by default and then you can see the priority uh, priority number. Uh, at the moment we've got three values uh, 0, 15 and 5. Zero means uh, the highest possible priority. It is assigned to the system uh, interrupts. Uh, 15 is, uh, in our case, the lowest possible priority, as we've got four bits uh, available to set the priority level. And those two uh, interrupts are related to op our operating system, to system context switch. We will describe this topic more in details uh, when we will discuss about the scheduler. So now please have a look that uh, the switching of the context has a lowest possible priority. It is done uh, to not block any hardware component, any hardware peripheral uh, by the operating system. So as you can see, the operating system, the free RTS, in the embedded system uh, is working as a, an additional layer which should not interact in a negative way, it should not delay any of the hardware interrupts which are present within the system. This is why the switching of the context has a lowest possible priority. Below you can find a few interrupts uh, which has been assigned uh, by the priority number five. This number five is coming from our configuration of FreeRTS. Let me come back for a while to FreeRTS configuration. So I click on this FreeRTS. I go to the config parameters and I scroll down at the end. Please have a look on two last fields. 
within these uh, within these config parameters. The first one, library lowest interrupt priority. It is a definition uh, configuration of the lowest possible priority, which is available within our embedded system, within uh, in our case within Cortex M4. So in this case, it is 15 as uh, with an STM32, we are using four bits only. Uh, and the second, and this interrupt would be assigned to the interrupts which are used to switching the context, as you already seen on previous screen. The second component, where we've got this value 5, it is uh, the constant called library max Cisco interrupt priority. And uh, this uh, constant, uh, this define, is uh, setting the maximum uh, level of the priority of the interrupt, which can still execute uh, API, so functions from the operating systems. Uh, this is a very important point due to the fact that uh, all of the operations within operating system, so switching the context, uh, changing the uh, priority of the of the task, waiting for the semaphore, waiting for the queue, changing anything within the semaphore queue smooth access, or any change within the components of the operating system is done with so-called critical sections. All the critical sections within the free RTS are done in such a way that we are blocking all interrupts um, with the level which is uh, set to library max syscall interrupt priority. So we are blocking those interrupts which can execute any of the function from the operating system. We are not blocking interrupts which are related to the hardware and do not use any function of the operating system. So this is this uh, number five we've seen within the NVIC configuration. And at the moment, uh, the other components have assigned this number uh, five. And then if you go on the right side, you can see use free RTS functions. This use free RTS functions means that uh, all those interrupts which has selected this column must have the interrupt level between five and 15. We can we can have a look on the first example. As you can see, I've got, I can have a selection from five to fifteen. Lower number is not possible due to the fact that we configured in the freeRTS config.h file. So within the freeRTS configuration, this uh, level as a maximum uh, priority level uh, for the interrupts which could execute uh, freeRTS uh, functions. So this is this is the configuration of uh, of any interrupts. We will come back to this point uh, later on within the uh, description of the operating system. The rest of the components, uh, including the code generation, including the DMA configuration, is completely the same, like with the different uh, STM32 Cubemix uh, application. We will not uh, spend time uh, on this uh, on this part. This is all information I would like to pass to you within this section. Thank you for watching this video.